This is beautiful. This is fucking yeah. happening. This is almost like the real deal. This is almost how that actual shirt was. The shirt, it was the same shirt on both album covers? Double nickels on the dime and- Yeah, I used, that's why I used it. Because that was, uh, that was my favorite one. I used it, yeah, and the double nickels on the dime. Though you can't see the front, right? The guy in the, my buddy Dirk's in the back. Because what we had to do was, or what we were trying to do was get my eyes in the mirror and the speedometer at 55 miles an hour and San Pedro in the window. And him in the back seat to get this thing. And I, I did three passes. And uh, fuck, we got it. Well, when I met D Boone, there <laughs> it goes back to D Boone again. But when I met him, he didn't know rock except Creedence. D Boone hadn't heard of Cream or Who or T Rex. I remember I took him to T Rex and played him these records. But all he really knew was Creedence, and he had learned, you know, the songs. He had all the, those first six records, and but I couldn't fucking hear the bass on the fucking records. I can now, but you know, then, 13 and shit. So I thought, well, I'll try my best, but here's how I can even be like Creedence more. I'll wear John Fogarty shirts. In fact, I thought they were really bitching shirts. I thought it was kind of like T-Rex, you know, he had his thing. And I didn't know these were, cause I grew up Navy housing. I didn't know these were lumberjack or farmer shirts. I thought, oh, that's his kind of rock and roll shirt, you know? So it was my way of trying to be in with the credence with him so that's the way it goes i know it's crazy and then you know we learned all that stuff and i learned all when going back god i learned all them bass lines all wrong but at least <laughs> the shirts were kind of close <laughs> you know so that that's the, that was the connection kind of thing and it was trippy uh okay when the punk came and make your own clothes go to the thrift store and buy these clothes and paint on them and shit and make yeah. your own take them apart put them together with a safety pin and we were like way into that until uh, getting so much fucking grief from uh, square johns and even worse rock and rollers uh we kind of went back to high school clothes we said well we're gonna put the punk up here and maybe not wear it out here because these motherfuckers would not leave us alone you know blocks away yelling fuck you devo and weird ass shit you know and so okay went back to high school clothes flannels and it's funny because uh, Flannel was okay with punk. The hardcore guys, it was no problem with them. I get college, at work, you couldn't tell anybody you were a punk rocker in those days. You had to hide this all from people. Well, I remember when uh, we went with Flag for the first time in Europe and there was punk people that dressed that way in the daytime. And that would trip to side. We were in Geneva and staying at a squat after the gig. And these guys dressed like this during the daytime and that was like, whoa. You know, <laughs> and we, we wanted to do it too in a way, but man, if you, you don't know the fucking grief, it was like nightmare. People were so fucking freaked out by that shit. In a way it was kind of good, but as far as like having to get day to day stuff done, it was fucked up, man. It was wasting your energy and time. These motherfuckers grind you down for that. The Warped Tour a couple of years ago, you're gonna be on the hot topic stage and it was this red canopy I remember and I thought, whoa, we're gonna be talking about some issues here. And it was like, no, nah, this is the name of a store that sells punk clothes, which was a lot, a lot different because you're, you're supposed to make your own clothes in those days, you know. And, and we, we saw the pictures of the cats in England and stuff, you know, and they're painting on there, and Richard Hell wrote on his things and ripped them. He invented that look. And uh, at first he was telling me, yeah, it looked a little dangerous, a little gang. And then he got, started getting really angry. I don't want to talk about it. Because he's my hero and shit, so I felt like a big dick for asking the wrong thing. But I, I, we really dug his clothes where he's opening that shirt and says, you make me, he wrote on himself, you make me bland, his pants are off. We, we, we hadn't seen shit like that. We just thought we loved those clothes. To us, it was went with the music, you know, it was all... Part of this whole thing of invent yourself, somehow getting your own expression and not being a clone army so much, you know? And uh, yeah, so we went back to the high school clothes. And, uh, but it turned out that the, the, these things were okay. And skater guys liked them too. I don't, I don't know why. You know, I can't tell you because I'm not really a young hardcore or a skater guy, but they, they, they had no problem with those clothes. They didn't consider them hippie clothes. Even though, yeah, it's John Fogarty's rock and roll outfit. For that AM radio friendly kind of, he had these intense songs. I think D Boone 
that is one thing that really attracted him to that music. And punk, and punk seemed like people wrote what was on their mind, no problem. You know, if I feel this way, you're gonna hear about it. And D. Boone was felt sympathetic things with the Creedence, uh, like a protest band. Yeah, a protest band. I mean, that's what the Min Minutemen was trying to be too, in a way. It was a protest, so that was the kind of thing. And that's kind of the flannel, the the idea of the flannel too. Uh, the, th the threads, all different colors to make one shirt, this kind of thing. Kind of a, a metaphor, an allegory. He even arranged the band that way. He thought the guitars were too big, and so he played real trebly and shit so the bass and the drums could come up and it'd be more uh, like political idea in a band, right? With the uh, egalitarian, uh, what do you call it, like an economy. We're gonna make this equal economies here, the drum, the bass, and the guitar. You know, uh, and him, you know, holding that position, he had to kind of let go of that power that the guitarist traditionally had. Even was about this. He wanted to reorganize things. Uh, yeah, so it's it's hard for me to think of a band or music and stuff without thinking about him. I'm, I, my personal experience is so close with him, and and a way the fucking shirt uh, embodies some of this shit. And so the flannel. Uh, I, I also like the way it feels. Well, Min Min had to end because the main guy uh, got killed. Uh, I call him the main guy. I guess we were kind of three equal. I can't see Georgie lower. <laughs> Maybe I was the lower one. But <laughs> to me, you know, Dee Boone was like, he could not replace that band, could not go on. And so the band ended. I didn't really know what to do. I thought nobody wanted to hear me play bass without him, so I, I actually stopped playing. And then Thurston came over and had me do Evil. And then this kid uh, from Ohio, he had a buddy who was in the Minutemen and played him some music. And he found my, I didn't know you had to pay to be unlisted. So uh, he called me up. He says, I'm coming over. I said, what do you mean you're coming over? He said, yeah, we're going to make a band. I was like, what? And then the guy comes over from Ohio. He drives his folks car out. And, but I just thought he had fucking cojones, like big dog, church bells, you know. So I said, fuck, okay, I'll make a band with you. So 1991 comes up and uh, yeah, it was heavy when I made that. That's the first record we made for Columbia. And uh, at the same time was Gulf War. And also, my pop was dying of cancer. He died when I was in the studio. So it's like in February or something of 91. And so I came up with this idea of a, a fly, a fly, you know, flying like a fly in your flag and shit. So fly the flannel, you know, because uh, everybody's got their own, well, my perfect world, everybody's got their own favorite flannel. <laughs> and that was mine. And I thought that's what it comes down to, you know. Uh, it was an emotional time for me, uh, the, all those things going on. And I thought, fuck it, I'll just put my favorite shirt on the <laughs> record cover called Fly in the Flower. For me, it was really important because uh, uh, the Minuteman, right, D. Boone, it was a lot about, and of course, Georgie, but me and D. Boone as boys and losing him, I didn't know at the time, right, of course. Double Nickels and the Dime, probably the high point of the minute, man. We didn't know. In fact, we had a triple album plan. We, you know, we didn't know any of this shit was coming down the way it did. And then here, uh, five, six years later, I'm, my pop's getting to the cancer's killing him. So it's like kind of same trip, you know, yeah, it's kind of down. But uh, I wanted to like uh, have music to uh, keep up, keep myself up in a way. Uh, it was a heavy, heavy thing. I don't know, I saw continuity. Maybe it's kind of <laughs> twisted. But to me, it was like, this is my part. But on the other hand, I, a hand, I felt a connection with my older days because of the circumstance. Fucked up kind of time. One thing I was going to ask is uh, uh, political chant was used in uh, uh, Streets of Fire, the skateboard video. That's Santa Cruz, right? There was, a, there was an Ohio one too, Skate Out? Ohio, Ohio Skate, Skate Out? out yeah. There's, there's fire hose on that. 
But I think you, you're right. Paranoid Chance even before that. Yeah. Jason Jesse. Yeah. And there's there's the Santa Cruz one, and there's Ohio Skate Out. Those are the ones I remember. Well, and skating to this thing, you know, and uh, that that actually I heard about. The cats coming to our gigs told us about that video, seeing that, and that's where they heard about us. More than being an SST band, more than touring around or being X Minute Man. But this looks really good. Just if we were like comparing it to the old days. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I say, but I like this. This is fucking happening. <laughs>